We'll begin by placing the machine down on its back, and you'll notice I've put a towel down to protect the casing. Your machine will come with two hoses, two different colors, gray for the acid water ho uh, output and white for the alkaline drinking water. Let's start with the white. We'll begin the process by removing the black rubber protective cap on the tap water inlet port. And then by placing one of the two clamps that comes in the diverter bag over the end of the white tap water inlet hose. And then simply push the white hose onto the fitting. Quite often it'll be very difficult to get the end of the white hose onto the tap water inlet port, in which case it's very helpful to soak about the first inch of the white hose in some hot water for about 30 seconds. And that way the, the, the white hose should slip onto that fitting very easily and you'll be able to push it all the way on and seat the hose onto the port properly. Always make sure you brace the white fitting with a finger and then we'll finish by moving the clamp up over the in-water tap and then we'll begin with the acid water outlet by removing the black protective cap, putting our clamp over the end soaking the first inch of the water. After you give it a good soak for about 30 seconds, get a firm hold of the acid water outlet port with one hand and slide the hose over with the other. It should go on fairly easy after soaking. And then finish by working the clamp using a pair of pliers if you need to over the, the fitting and the hose. And it's that simple. Now let's take it to the tap and install it to the, fa the faucet. So now that we're at the sink, the first thing that we'll actually do is install the diverter onto the tap. To do this, you'll need the diverter bag, which came with the unit and looks like this. Let's take a look at what's inside the bag. First, you have the diverter and then a couple of adapter pieces to use on the end of the faucet if the diverter doesn't actually fit onto the end of your faucet. These diverters actually handle virtually all of the possible configurations, but if you find you have a specialized faucet or it doesn't fit for some reason, just go to your local hardware store to get the correct adapter. The bag also has a couple of nails in it, which you'll use if you prefer to do a wall mount, but most likely you won't need those nails. Now we'll remove the aerator from the end of the faucet. Most of the time you can do this just by using your fingers, but if it's really tight, you can use a pair of pliers to loosen it up, and then you can simply unthread it the rest of the way with your fingers. Then we'll take the diverter and actually try to screw it on to the end of the faucet, and in this case you'll see it's not going to work. So we'll take our adapter pieces, decide which one's the right size, screw that in by hand. Again, you don't want to over tighten this or use the pliers. You'll damage the threads on the end of the adapter. So you get it nice and tight, but finger tight's good enough. And then the diverter screws on to the end of the adapter. After you get the installation complete and you run water through the machine, if you find that you have leaks, you can always go back, take the diverter off, put a couple of wraps of white Teflon plumber's tape, which you can get at any good hardware, and that should take care of the problem. And that's it for the diverter. Now that you have the diverter installed, you'll want to locate a good spot for your ionizer. You'll want to find a spot that's convenient, that's close enough to the sink, yet out of the way. 
on this sink that's on the left side. Once the machine is located properly, you'll want to cut your hoses to the proper length. The white hose should be left long enough so that you'll have enough slack in the line to be able to access the back of the ionizer by turning it around. You'll notice the diverter swivels, so let's turn the diverter so the compression nut is facing us and remove the compression nut. The compression nut then goes on the outside on the white hose. The white hose goes onto the nipple of the diverter and then we reattach the compression nut. This might be kind of tight as we're applying some pressure so you can simply use a pair of pliers to finish up the job. And then position your hose back around and out of the way. As you'll notice, the gray hose simply needs to lay in the sink, and you can choose whatever length you want that's convenient for you so that you can capture the acid water for its many great uses. So let's plug it in and power it up. Remember, there's a three-prong plug, and you'll want to put that into a three-prong outlet, ideally a GFI outlet, like you see here in the wall. Once it's plugged in, we'll simply turn on the on-off power switch by flipping the switch up. Okay, let's learn how to use the machine now. The first thing we'll want to do is turn the water on at the tap to a nice easy flow so that the water is coming out of the faucet. We'll open the diverter level and you'll notice the water now coming out of the spout, the drinking water spout, and the acid hose. To control the water flow, you simply turn the lever to switch it back and forth from the tap to the machine and the spouts. Okay, let's wake the machine up by flipping the diverter to the on position. The first thing you'll notice is that a tune plays, which we can hear now. This indicates by lighting up the yellow light that we're in self-cleaning mode. When you're self-cleaning, you'll have acid water coming out of your drinking water spout. Don't drink that. The cleaning cycle takes about 10 to 20 seconds. The tune will play the whole time and you only need to do that once a day. When it's completed, the tune will stop playing and the light will move to the purple bar, which it's done now. To change the alkaline level, you simply need to depress the purple alkaline button to cycle the lights through the different pH levels. Now the cleaning cycle only has to go once a day, so when we come back to turn the machine on, the tune will start to play, and to bypass the cleaning cycle, we simply hit the alkaline button and select the level that we want to collect our drinking water. Each time you operate the machine, you'll notice the filter of life indicator light up. When your machine is new, you'll have one bar lit. When all the bars are lit up, it indicates that the filter life is almost over and you need to reorder a new filter and replace it within four weeks. When the machine is new and you first start to use it, the water that comes out of the drinking water spout will be dark colored from carbon dust. This is absolutely normal with any carbon filtration product. Let the machine run for about two minutes or until your water returns to a nice clear color. Then it's totally safe to drink. Well, that's it. It was much easier than what I thought. And here we are, prosting to you at home. And uh, prost to you for thank you for coming to my home and installing that machine and to your health. Here's the clean and healthy water. Something. Mm.